Welcome to the Didn't Get Frazzled Presents video series. This video is cancer screening for patients. We will discuss all of the screening tests recommended for adults by the United States Preventative Services Task Force, or the USPSTF. Many of these recommendations are controversial, so we'll also discuss alternative recommendations by other groups. The goal is to educate you as to what is available and recommended for cancer screening. Which screening tests are best for you is something you should discuss with your physician. We will start with the five deadliest cancer types as determined by the National Cancer Institute, who examined the mortality and incidence rates for the most common cancer types in the United States for 2016. And the deadliest cancer is lung cancer. Causing estimated deaths of over 158,000, lung cancer is more than three times as deadly as the number two cause on this list. Like with many cancers, the biggest risk factor is smoking. If you're a smoker, quitting smoking is the best thing that you can do to reduce your risk of cancer. It's worth noting that until 2013, there was no recommended screening test for lung cancer. Also, chest x-rays have never been shown to be effective in lung cancer screening and are not recommended. The USPSTF recommends a low-dose chest CT for patients aged 55 to 80 who are smokers or quit smoking in the last 15 years and have a 30-pack year history. Pack your history is calculated by multiplying the average number of packs per day smoked by the number of years. So if you smoke 10 cigarettes daily, which is a half a pack per day, for 60 years, you have a 30 pack year history. The recommendations by the American Cancer Society are the same except for the age range. They recommend screening at age 55 to 74. Medicare covers this test from 55 to 77. Because lung cancer screening is relatively new, doctors are less likely to suggest it. If you qualify and are interested, bring this up with your physician at your next office visit to see if it's appropriate for you. The second deadliest cancer is colorectal cancer. This combines both colon cancer and rectal cancer. The USPSTF recommendation is to start screening for all patients aged 50 to 75, along with a weaker recommendation to screen those aged 76 to 85, if healthy enough to undergo cancer treatment if positive. Their most recent recommendation for 2016 does not specify which type of screening is preferred. The American College of Physicians 2015 report recommends the four methods listed on the slide as preferred, but with no preference among them. Let's look at these options. For colonoscopy, a scope is inserted into the rectum and used to visualize the entire colon. This requires a bowel prep the night before so the doctor can see your insides and not just stool, and anesthesia because no one would want to be awake while having this done. If polyps are noted, they can be removed during the procedure. Biopsies can also be obtained if needed. A flexible sigmoidoscopy visualizes only the first part of the colon, called the sigmoid colon. Anesthesia is not used, which lowers the complication rate, but makes the procedure much less pleasant. The other problem is polyps and masses in the upper colon will be missed. This limitation can be mitigated by also checking stool cards. Stool cards are the easiest to do, although many people do not like poking their stools with a stick prior to flushing. The stool is smeared on the card, which is later tested for blood. If positive, a colonoscopy is recommended. Not all cancers bleed right away, so this method can miss or delay diagnosis. For these reasons, the American College of Gastroenterology recommends colonoscopy every 10 years as the preferred method. The third deadliest cancer is pancreatic cancer. The incidence of pancreatic cancer is not that high. It's only number 12 on that list. However, it has one of the highest mortality rates, second only to gallbladder cancer, with a five-year survival rate of 7%. Unfortunately, there is no screening test for pancreatic cancer. The fourth deadliest cancer is breast cancer. Breast cancer has the highest incidence rate, even higher than lung cancer. When you consider that men make up barely over 1% of breast cancer cases, you can understand why women fear this cancer the most. It is, in fact, the second deadliest cancer in women. Fortunately, there is a screening test available, the mammogram. Unfortunately, we have conflicting and highly controversial recommendations. The USPSTF 2016 update recommends women aged 40 to 49 consider screening every two years, aged 50 to 74 to screen yearly, and aged 75 and older that there is insufficient evidence to recommend screening. They discuss the increased risk in older and younger populations of unnecessary biopsies, overdiagnosis, and overtreatment. The American Cancer Society is a bit more aggressive, recommending women aged 40 to 44 consider yearly screening, 45 to 54 to be screened yearly, and 55 and older to screen every one to two years. They recommend to continue screening as long as you're in good health and your life expectancy is 10 years or more. 
The National Comprehensive Cancer Network is the most aggressive, recommending yearly mammograms for all women starting age 40 and continuing for as long as a woman is in good health. They also recommend a clinical breast exam, which the other two groups do not. No groups recommend screening men. So what should you do? As always, this is a decision you should make after discussing it with your physician. Also remember, these screening recommendations are for average risk women. Women at higher risk include a family history of breast cancer and a first degree relative, mother, sister, or daughter, a personal history of breast cancer, and BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutations. Please see my website for links to a more detailed discussion of higher risk women and screening recommendations for this population. This brings us to the fifth deadliest cancer, prostate cancer. This is the second deadliest cancer in men. The screening test is a PSA, or prostate-specific antigen. The PSA, which is a blood test, can be done with or without a digital rectal exam. The USPSTF recommends against screening, citing the high risk of false positive rates, pain and risk of biopsy, and overtreatments as many types of prostate cancer grow slowly. More aggressive but also vague is the American Cancer Society recommendation to consider yearly screening in men age 50 and older who have a life expectancy of at least 10 years. The American Neurological Association recommends to consider yearly screening in men age 55 to 69 and for higher risk men age 40 to 54. No screening is recommended for men age 70 or older or for men with a life expectancy shorter than 15 years. Consideration should be based on, quote, the man's values and preferences, end quote. If you find that annoyingly ambiguous, join the club. Higher risk men are black patients and those with a family history of prostate cancer. There are racial and ethnic differences for all cancer types, but the difference in prostate cancer is particularly striking. As you can see from the slide, non-Hispanic black men are more than twice as likely to die of prostate cancer as men in the other groups. There are no screening recommendations for the following cancer types. Bladder cancer, skin cancer, lymphomas, thyroid cancer, kidney cancer, leukemia, endometrial cancer, and ovarian cancer. In fact, only one remaining cancer type has screening recommendations, and that cancer is cervical cancer. The USPSTF recommends a pap smear every three years for women aged 21 to 65. Alternatively, once you reach 30, you can choose to have a pap with HPV testing every five years until age 65. They recommend against screening before age 21 and after age 65 and less high risk. They also recommend against screening women who have had a hysterectomy with removal of the cervix unless you have a history of cervical cancer or precancer with CAN grade two or three. This only applies to average risk women, so if you are immunocompromised, including being HIV positive, this does not apply to you. Recommendations from the American Cancer Society are the same, except they provide more detail about when it's okay to stop screening after age 65. Nearly all cases of cervical cancer are caused by HPV, a virus. There is a vaccine available against HPV, which can prevent cervical cancer. The three-shot series is recommended for both sexes up until age 26. This vaccine is usually given by pediatricians since it's most effective if given before you are sexually active. If you are age 18 to 26 and have not yet received this vaccine, let your doctor know. This is Didn't Get Frazzled, my novel, which gives you a front row view of the craziness that is medical school. Kirkus Reviews calls it entertaining, educative, and unflaggingly funny. Please check it out and tell all your friends. We've just reviewed all the cancer screening tests recommended for asymptomatic patients at average risk. If you are symptomatic, you should see your doctor right away. If you are at higher than average risk, you will likely need more aggressive screening than we discussed today. Thank you for watching Didn't Get Frazzled Presents Cancer Screening for Patients. For additional information, go to my website, davidzhirsch.wordpress.com, and click Videos. There you'll find all of my videos along with hyperlinks for all of the references discussed and additional information for higher risk patients. Please like and click subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I post another detailed video on common medical conditions. I wish you all good luck and good health.